One by one, they all came in. Marshall just sat there on the bed, doing his best to keep calm and not lash out in anger or hug his friends in tears. He saw the nervous and guilty looks as they were all giving him, but he had to make sure for a long time there was no talking. Finally, Chase stepped forward. Marshall, we stop, ordered Marshall, holding out his paw. Chase obeyed and stood down. Marshall closed his eyes. Before we talk, before you tell me how sorry we were, before you do anything, let me get this out of the way. Marshall then took a deep breath, and for the first time in his life, he spoke in anger. You betrayed me! The five winced, but continued to stand as Marshall let everything he had been holding for too long. How could you say all those mean things to me? After we've been through, though. I trusted you, I loved you, and I thought of you as a family, and you backstabbed me in the back. Yes, I did make mistakes. Yes, I am a klutz. But at least I don't tell my friends they are annoyance or worthless. He growled, showing off his teeth as he got up and stood before the whimpering pups, who were already tearing up. I would do anything for you five, especially anything for you, Chase, shouted Marshall, glaring at the police pup. I was there when your dad died. I was there for you all the way. You were my brother, and yet you yelled at me like I was, I was some kind of criminal, he barked in anger. I ran away because I felt that I was not needed by any of you, and I almost died doing so. Yeah, running away was stupid, but so was bullying me. Marshall continued huff and puff, but there was something else he caught in his eyes, and he was crying. Tears leaked down from his eyes as he lowered his head, muttering, But I can't hate you. Any of you. Every time I try, I just think about all the fun times we've had together growing up. All the missions we did, all the lives we helped. I just think of how much we've grown close, and I want to believe that this feeling is still there. I want to still love you, Five, even though you hurt me. His ears perked as Marshall continued. I... I heard everything what you pups did, and I left. I want to know, right now, each of you, why did you do that? Why did you go through a storm and fight a bear just to bring me home? You made it clear that you didn't think I was fit for Paw Patrol anyway. Rubble was the first to answer. Because you are, buddy. They all glanced at him. What we did, it was stupid. Apollo was just a TV show, and we didn't and have to say those things about you, Marshall. It was wrong. We were wrong. And when I realized what we did, Rubbles began to sniff as he began to tear up. We thought we lost you. It felt like nothing we could ever do to make up for our mistakes. That nothing would be happy again. Rubbles right, said Rocky, lowering his head. We're all ashamed of what we did. There's nothing wrong with being clumsy. We lived it for it for so long and we loved you for being you. When I thought you were dead, Marshall, I I prayed that you were still alive and I even offered anything to see you again, even drowning myself in water if it meant having you back. Rocky walked over and gently licked Marshall's cheeks. Do you remember when you took care of me when the others dealt with those bullies? You stood by me and I let you down. I promise that will never happen again. Before Marshall could answer, he was tackled by a crying Zuma, much to everyone's surprise. The sobbing chocolate Labrador held right him tight and didn't dare let go. Please tell me it's real. Please tell me you're alive. Marshall's expression softened as he gently rubbed Zuma's head. Yeah, Zuma, I'm here. Wah! Said Zo cried Zuma, hugging tighter. When I would, would I wanted you, you Marshall. Marshall didn't say anything. He just hugged his friend and nuzzled him. I'm alive, Zuma. You don't have to worry. I I don't I don't care if you'll forgive us or not. I mean, would it like it, but he rubbed his eyes and gave Marshall a warm smile. Knowing you're alive is good enough for me, big bro. Zuma, Marshall began to tear up and hugged the little pup. I'm sorry I worried you. Marshall, I'm sorry, whispered Sky, as she got back up on his bed and whimpered. I acted just like those bullies from my past. When it hits me when I did, I just wanted to sink into that earth of shame. She started to tear up. I saw your fire truck, your blood at the bear's cave. I thought, I thought I lost one of my best friends, and it was all my fault. If I stood up and for you, if any of us, this didn't have to happen. It's all our fault. You shouldn't be the one injured in the first place. You should have been with us at the lookout. Turning away, she lowered her head. I don't deserve any of your forgiveness. Sky, whispered Marshall, 
as he closed his eyes and thought about his long journey. Did, did you and Chase really fight the bear for me? Fought and killed, whimpered Sky in turning green. I, I never wanted to, but I had to fight a hundred bears for you, Marshall. A real smile appeared on Marshall's lips, and then he turned to Chase, who stood there as still as a statue. Everyone waited for the breath as Marshall got up and jumped down. Walking over to the police dog, the two eyed each other, neither moving or saying anything. The four previously looked at each other with concern before Chase took a deep breath. This is for running away and nearly getting killed. Pow! The four pups gasped as Chase's paw smacked into Marshall's face, knocking him back in Chase's side and said, Your turn. Marshall stunned and then slowly turned into transformed into a growl. He charged at Chase and knocking him over. The two top pups barked and they began to ruffle each other up, biting and slamming their paws against each other. Chase kicked Marshall of, off of him before ramming him into the wall. Marshall yelped in pain before causing his rear leg to kick Chase in the gut and throw him off. Marshall, Chase, stop it! shouted Skye. What the heck are you guys doing? shouted Rubble. The two pups ignored their friends and Chase took off, Marshall running at right after him with the angry bark. They rushed out of the cottage into the snowy fields outside, much to the shock of the rest of the gang. Marshall finally tackled Chase and he bit his tail as hard as he could, making the police dog howl. The audience was shocked as the pups ran out and Sky shouted, Ryder, make them stop! Ryder was about to, but his father stopped him and shook his head. They need this. Marshall, cried out Misty, turning to her husband. Please stop him. No, he answered much to her shock. He stared at his eyes. This is between them, and as brothers, it was like me and t with Trigger. Chase had taken some snow and thrown at Marshall's face before smacking him a few more times with his paw. Before getting him up to a chokehold, Marshall gasped for air as he felt Chase's front legs wrapped around his neck. With all of his strength, Marshall elbowed Chase in the, Chase in the gut and bit his, lit, his neck, dragging him down and continuing his attack. The group watched in horror except for Blaze and the Professor, as both dogs continued to tear each other apart, even to the point of bleeding. After a long period of time trying to get on top, the two broke away and they start, started hitting each other with their paws again only would make contact with the other and continue the blow on them. At first, it seemed like it would never end, but slowly they began to slow down, and besides the grunting, there was crying. The audiences widened as they saw both Chase and Marshall, crying as they continued to hit each other, with force of blows getting weaker and weaker in each moment. They finally, neither of them could lift their paws against each other. For a whole moment, they could stare at each other, and then hugged. Nuzzling each other, the two brothers cried side by side as they were whimpered, not from the pain from their fight, but from being released from their hearts. Naturally, there was some confused pups and humans. I don't get it, said Everest, shaking her head. They were about ready to kill each other, and now they're hugging each other like nothing's changed. Why? Because they're brothers, answered Blaze, smiling at the scene before him. True brothers will always love each other, even the worst of times. Sometimes you want to hug them, but sometimes you want to punch them. All the fighting was their way of talking, to saying that what needed to be said, all the emotion in each blow, and now that it's all used up. And with that anger and regret, they can heal. Blaze sighed, as the nostalgic look in his eyes made him water. Trigger, and I did it all the time. Those two, they're just like us. So, he forgives Chase? asked Rocky. He was going to forgive you all no matter what, said Blaze, laughing. That's how Marshall is. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, said Chase. I love you, Marshall. Always. I love you too, Chase, said Marshall, breaking into a hug and smiling. Sorry I almost broke the promise. Forget the promise, Marshall, said Chase, smile back. Promise me that, you'll n that if I ever do something as stupid as calling you annoyance again, you'll punch me? Promise, whispered Marshall as he hugged him. Again, I forgive you. I forgive all of you. Thank you, whispered Chase before grinning. You know, know that I went easy on you, right? Yeah, big softy, whispered Marshall. Before he sniffled the air and his eyes widened. Breaking the hug, he raised his eyebrow and stared at Chase with a suspicious smirk. Why do I smell sky scent on you? Close your mouth. A blush appeared on Chase's face. Uh, no reason. 
Oh my gosh, you two kissed, didn't ya? Shouted Marshall, earning everyone's attention before they all turned their attention towards Skye, who was just red as Chase. N no, I didn't kiss her yet, shouted Chase, his eyes wide upon the realization. Um, I mean... Marshall was just laughing hysterically as he laid on his back, kicking in the air. Soon the others joined, except for Skye, who was just shaking her head. Hmm, said Katie, as she checked Marshall's side again. The rest of the pups and Ryder were waiting in the medical room with anticipation. Shin, it had been three months since they found Marshall. Smiling, Katie nodded. Yep, he's all good to go. The pups all cheered with excitement as Marshall so pumped his paw in the air. Yes, this pup is back in the game. Glad to have you officially back, Marshall, said Ryder, scratching Marshall's ear much to his pleasure. Yeah, although it was funny seeing all of us take turns in your uniform, replied Skye. I didn't really know, you kind of looked cute in it, replied the grinning Chase, which earned him a peck on the cheek from his girlfriend. Ah, uh, get a room, muttered Zuma, rolling his eyes. Three months as a couple, and you two just can't keep your paws off of each other. What can I say? I can't get enough of her, said Chase, nuzzling Sky affectionately. A beep on Ryder's pup pad had everyone in the possible rescue mission and owner open up the channel. Hello, what's up? Ryder, we got a gas leak in my store. Alex and I are already safe outside, but we need to stop it as soon as possible. Can you help? No problem, Mr. Porter, said Ryder. He raised his arm. No job is too big. No pup is too small. He turned to his pup team and said, Paw Patrol, to the lookout. Let's go, the six shouted as they made their way to the elevator. Marshall jumped from his bed and shouted, Wait for me! Just as he exited, his paw got caught on the play rope and tripped. Whoa, whoa! He bounced off the cushion, slammed into the wall, and started to roll towards the elevator. Heads up! Uh oh, said the pups, before they were bowled over by Marshall and ended up in the tangle. Blushing, Marshall whispered, Sorry, pups. Guess this proof that I'm better, huh? The six laughed as the elevator began to rose. Yep, things were all better again. Well, my pretties, that was Marshall has Gone Missing. A, uh, well, a Paw Patrol, um, story written by Havik Hound. Um, my final thoughts on this story. Um, this is actually a pretty good story, to be honest. This is a really well-made, um, creepypasta, well, story. But even though this story has, like, ten chapters, there's, like, a few extra chapters. But that's just the author's notes and that, so... Yeah, I decided to go ahead and review this story because, yeah, um, the main reason is because this, the author, this is the same, the story, and it was written by the same author that wrote, um, Monkey's Paw, which I've narrated that early this year, which I really liked Monkey's Paw. I thought it was a really great story, especially with everything of how it went out and that. So I really got to say it's still a pretty awesome, well-made story. I do like that the story actually was well made, especially with the good grammar, which the grammar is pretty good as well as the sense structure and storyline. This is pretty much like an alternate version of the episode where Marshall runs away because he thinks, you know, the pups didn't like him or something. But except with this one, it has a bit of a twist where, you know, Marshall almost gets himself killed by running away and running away from people and stuff. I still thought it was a pretty good story for what this is. So, anyways, I actually really thought it was a really great story. And I definitely got to really say that the gram that I really can see this happening with Paw Patrol and the fact that, you know, the bear almost killed Marshall. And I mean, I I'm going to be honest, it was a bit sad at parts, but I still really thought this was pretty good. And I'm glad that Marshall did not get killed off in this one, unlike um, Monkey's Paw. But Monkey's Paw was pretty good, I'm not going to lie. This one is definitely a really awesome story. And it is on fanfiction.net for any of you guys who are wondering. So, I still really thought this was a really cute story. Well, not well. it is a cute story at times, especially with Everett, with Skye and Chase finally become official couple. I can honestly see, you know, this becoming the case for Paw Patrol. I mean, this is not out of the ordinary for Paw Patrol to do something like that. Because, well, I haven't really watched Paw Patrol very much, but I have... Um, seen a few episodes of it and 
Marshall's actually one of my favorites, along with Chase and Zuma being my one of my favorite characters. There is, but I've also wonder, you know, I've always liked the fact that Marshall is, you know, um, clumsy in that. And I've always found him to be really funny when he's clumsy in the sense. So, with that being the case, and with that being said, the grammar's still good in the story, as well as the sense structuring. I do like the plot of this story. I thought the concept was really well done, really well made. And I honestly thought it was a really awesome storyline. I really thought it was really awesome. So, with that being the case, and with that being said, um, to have a count, he did an awesome job with um, Monkey's Paw. He did a really awesome job with this story. Not gonna lie. This story was fantastic. I enjoyed narrating it. It was fun. I actually do plan to maybe do more Paw Patrol stories. Depending on if I could find some good ones out there. Like, depending on if I find one that I really like. So, with that being the case and that being said, I still found this to be a good story. And, for those wondering... Um, yeah, it's the same, this, the author of this story is actually the same author that did Monkey's Paw, which I narrated Monkey's Paw sometime in the beginning of this year, which was actually, well, beginning of 2021, so it was actually a pretty fun story. So, anyways, um, like I'm just gonna say before, um, this is just simply, believe my own personal opinion, and before I get to the final rating in that, I could definitely say right now that it does play a little bit of backstory and this actually teaches the pups, you know, something, thing, you know, saying, you know, not to be, you know, so hard on Marshall and, you know, etc. I mean, it's a pretty good storyline. We get a little bit of backstory more, more of, um, you know, m you know, Marshall and um, his you know, family, and same with Chase and his family, and etc. I really do, do really like this one. So, anyways, with that being the case, and with that being said, what did you personally think of this story? Oh, before I, you know, finish off, um, this is just simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's perfectly fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these stories, and this is just simply my own personal thoughts. I'm going to give this story a um, 10 out of 10. It's a, emotional at parts. Pretty good storyline. I can honestly see this happening in Paw Patrol. And it's just a really awesome story. Emotional parts, but I still found it to be a really good story. So, and you guys can want, look at this um, story on fanfiction.net if you want to give it a read. I recommend it. It's a pretty good story. I honestly thought it was a good story. And it's pretty interesting at parts, but... Also, a bit, you know, a bit upsetting at parts two, but it was still a good story. So, anyways, with that being said, and that being the case, what did you part guys personally think of this um, story? I know it's not really a creepypasta, but if you want to call it a creepypasta, that's perfectly fine. What did you guys personally think of this story? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done personally to help make the story a lot better? Feel free to leave me what your thoughts are down in the comments below, because... I personally would like to hear what you guys think of it. So, as always, I'm the Lion Queen. I want to thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be new on my channel, feel free to leave this story a like. Comment and subscribe. Leave a like on this video as well. Comment and subscribe if you're new. And ring the bell for notifications to when I upload. So that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out. And I'll see you all next time.